Are you ready to dust off your NES and relive the glory days of 8-bit gaming? Well, you're in luck, because 2022 was a banner year for the NES homebrew scene. That's right. Dedicated fans have been creating new games for the beloved console, even though its creators have moved on to bigger and better things. In fact, there were around a hundred new releases this year, including demos and proof of concept games. But don't worry, we've done all the hard work for you and narrowed it down to the top 10 must-play NES homebrew games of 2022. These are the ones that we personally spent the most time with and believe could have easily been released during the heyday of the NES with a seal of quality. And the best part, this list is in no particular order, except for the number one pick, which we're keeping a secret for now. So grab your controller and let's dive in and discover some hidden gems of the NES homebrew world. At number 10 on our list, we've got a real gem for all you classic NES enthusiasts. Bass Def Adventures is a fun, action-packed game that transports players into the world of Ludo and Simon, two longtime friends who find themselves trapped in a video game. It's up to you to help them escape and return home by facing against the Martian Emperor and his hordes of robots. In this game, players will travel through several fantastic worlds, from the Crystal Forest to the Haunted House and even the Moon. Along the way, they'll have to use their wits and their character's unique abilities to overcome all sorts of challenges. For for example, Ludo can jump higher and Simon shoots harder, so players will have to learn to switch between them on the fly to adapt to each situation. Along the way you'll also meet Pasta, who's on hand to provide valuable advice on how to avoid the pitfalls and succeed in their quest. Bass Def Adventures was originally released in 2019 by Omake Books, but it was localized and released in 2022 with an English translation, making it accessible to a wider audience and hence on this list. The game features 21 action-packed levels, seven super badass bosses, and a password system. So if you're looking for a fun, exciting adventure that combines classic gameplay with a unique twist, don't miss out on Bass Def Adventures. At number nine on our list of top NES homebrew games, we've got a game that's sure to test your skills as a classic NES adventurer, Angana, Scourge of the Goblin King. In this new action-adventure game, you'll grab your sword, escape the dungeon, and slay the Goblin King in an epic quest to save the land of Angana. Because seriously, who wouldn't want to save a place called Angana? As our unfortunate hero, who clearly has terrible luck, finds himself imprisoned once again by a great evil, it's up to you to guide him through a variety of terrain and obstacles on his way to freedom. So you'll need to find items, gain experience, crush evil minions, because who doesn't love a good evil minion crushing, and defeat harrowing bosses. And Gunna features a variety of terrain and obstacles, five dungeons hidden across a vast overworld, with many items and power-ups to aid you in your quest. Over 20 enemies will try to stop you along the way, and as you defeat each one, they will appear in your fully illustrated bestiary. Because who doesn't love a good bestiary, especially one with illustrations? Overall, if you're a fan of games like Link to the Past, you'll love Angana. It's a challenging and rewarding adventure that'll keep you coming back for more. So grab your sword, escape the dungeon, and save the land of Angana. Do you have what it takes to be the hero of Angana? Or at least pretend to be a hero? At number 8 on our list of top NES homebrew games, we've got a game that will transport you to a world of 8-bit Zeldavania action. Dungeons and Doom Knights. Can you defeat the Doom Knight and his army of evil undead? You're exploring a world filled with vampires, ghosts, death knights, liches, ancient evils, giant flying eyeballs, chicken cows, and what other crazy horrors they have cooked up for you. But my favorite thing about this game is there are a ton of humorous nods to classic NES games all over it. The gameplay here is fast-paced and satisfying, with a mix of combat, exploration, and puzzle solving that'll keep you engaged and entertained. The graphics are colorful and fun, creating a unique overall tone, and the music complements the mood and setting perfectly. So if you're a fan of games like Legend of Zelda or Castlevania, or if you enjoy action-adventure games with a sense of humor, you definitely want to give Dungeons & Doom Knights a try. It's a must-play for fans of the genre, and you'll have a blast battling your way through this humorous and challenging adventure. At number 7 on our list of top NES homebrew games, we've got Yeah Yeah Beavis 2. The title itself is a joke, referring to a game that never actually existed, but was listed in the back of a magazine called Yeah Yeah Beavis 1. 
It was thought it would be fun to make a sequel to a game that never existed, so that's exactly what we have here. The object of this game is simple. Your character zaps lightning out of their hands, and your goal is to destroy the monsters on the screen before the time runs out, all while collecting power-ups for points, extra time, or extra lives. The gameplay is like a single-screen arcade game. Think Donkey Kong, but with a twist. You cannot climb down any ladders. If you want to get off an upper platform, you need to jump off it, which obviously affects the way you go about destroying the monsters. The graphics in Yeah Yeah Beavis 2 are what I would call fun. You can tell what everything is supposed to be. The monsters look like monsters, and John Riggs looks like, well, John Riggs. The music is chiptune versions of classic public domain songs, which adds to the overall charm of the game. If I had to come up with a weakness for the game, it would be that it gets a little bit repetitive after a while. There are a lot of levels and it takes a while to get through them all, but hey, at least you get to zap monsters with your hands and jump off ladders like a boss. Overall, if you're looking for a two-player, couch co-op, arcade-style game to play with a friend, Yeah Yeah Beavis 2 is a must-try. It's a fun take on the single-screen arcade game, and it's definitely worth giving a shot. Just don't blame me if you find yourself humming that catchy chiptune music for days on end. At number 6 on our list of top NES homebrew games, we have Arm Wrestling Classic, a game that puts your button mashing skills to the test. You play as Barry Biceps, a muscle-bound hero on a quest to become the ultimate arm wrestling champion. You'll train your arm to get stronger and take on challengers in a variety of environments, including the backyard, the parking garage, the bar, and the arena. You can play solo in a one-player story mode or invite a friend for two-player versus action. Arm Wrestling Classic is a unique and fun game that's perfect for fans of rhythm games like Dance Dance Revolution or Parappa the Rapper. The gameplay is simple, just mash the buttons as shown on the screen to win. If you press the wrong button, you'll get penalized, but you have a few chances to get it right before you lose. In between rounds, you'll collect bags of money to increase your score and move on to the next level. There's also a training mode where you can practice your button mashing skills and level up your character. The graphics in Arm Wrestling Classic are colorful and fun and the music is varied and upbeat. There's a password system to help you pick up where you left off if you lose, and the game gets progressively harder as you move through the levels. Overall, if you're a fan of arm wrestling games, or just looking for something new and unique to play on your NES, the Arm Wrestling Classic is a must play. It's easy to pick up and fun for all ages, and it's sure to provide hours of entertainment for you and your friends. So grab your controller, flex your biceps, and get ready to mash those buttons. It's time to become the ultimate arm wrestling champion in Arm Wrestling Classic. Up next, The Adventures of Panzer II is a retro platformer that will transport you back to the glory days of the Nintendo Entertainment System. With four playable characters, each with their own unique abilities and attacks, you'll have plenty of options for tackling the game's nine levels and ten bosses. The cutscenes and hilarious NPC dialogue add a unique touch of comedy. The controls are smooth and responsive, and the level design is well balanced. The visual style is classic retro. You have colorful sprites and a vibrant use of color, and the sound effects and music are spot on for the genre. To me, one of the standout features of The Adventures of Panzer II is the diverse cast of characters that are available to play as. In addition to the main character, Panzer, there are three other characters you can choose from. Ken Caro, the agile hunter with his trusty bow and arrow. You have the mage with powerful ice magic, and Vespito, the crazed troll armed with explosive attacks. Each of these characters have their own unique abilities and playstyle, allowing players to switch between them and experience the game in different ways. This real-time character swapping feature also adds an extra layer of strategy to the gameplay as players choose the best character for each situation. If you're a fan of retro platformers or just looking for a fun and entertaining game, The Adventures of Panzer II is definitely worth checking out. It's a great homage to the classic NES games of the past while providing something new and fun for hours of entertainment. So dust off that NES controller, grab a bag of chips, and get ready to join The Adventures of Panzer and his team as they take on the new evil threatening the world. Up next, we have Orbody Binder's Tale. This is a linear platform shooter that combines the best elements of Mega Man, Contra, and Journey to Silius. It takes place on the alien world of Orbody, where players take on the role of Binder, an orphaned battle bot on a quest for revenge. The goal is to fight your way through five unique levels and confront the AI fortress of Galvinstad. The game boasts fast-paced run-and-gun gameplay, allowing players to run, gun, jump, and dash their way through enemies and obstacles. As you progress through the game, you'll be able to expand your moveset and weld five different weapon types as you take down 15 vicious bosses that stand in your way. 
If I had to pick one downside to Orobody's Binder's Tail, it's the way the controls have that weird feeling to them. It's just every once in a while, I don't feel like I have complete control. So it may take some getting used to before players feel comfortable with the controls. The graphics in Orobody are impressive, with detailed character designs and a vibrant color palette. The five levels in the game each have their own unique aesthetic, and the music is also top-notch with a catchy, upbeat soundtrack that will probably keep you pumped up during gameplay. Overall, or Body Binder's Tale seems like a fantastic blend of three classic NES games. Despite some of the odd controls, the gameplay is fast-paced and challenging. The graphics are impressive, the music is top-notch, so if you're a fan of Mega Man, Contra, or Journey to Celius, or just enjoy challenging platformers with a unique and strong story, be sure to check out Or Body Binder's Tale. Up next, Full Quiet for the NES is a unique and challenging adventure game that's been a long time coming for fans. Developed by Retro Entertainment Games, this game was crowdfunded and took several years to be completed, but I think it was worth the wait. In Full Quiet, players are thrown into a mysterious forest filled with strange creatures and puzzles to solve. The goal here is to find and rescue the player's son, which has been taken, and you do this by restoring and connecting various systems of equipment throughout the map. This game is not straightforward, as there are many paths to take and resources to manage, such as different weapons and items to find. Players must also evade mysterious creatures that are hunting them as they progress. It's hard to nail the genre of this game, but if I had to give it one, I would call it survival horror on the NES. The gameplay here is engaging and requires players to think critically and pay attention to the clues and messages they uncover. The controls are smooth and the level design is well thought out, with a large map to explore and plenty of secrets to discover. The balance of the game is challenging, it's not impossible, and there's plenty of replay value for players who want to explore every corner of the map and solve all the puzzles. The graphics and sound of Full Quiet are also top notch. The visual style is distinct, and the sprite design and use of color are well done. The music and sound effects are fitting and add to the atmosphere of the game. Overall, Full Quiet is a must-play for fans of survival horror adventure games and those who enjoy a challenge. It stands out amongst the other games in the genre on the NES platform with its unique premise and engaging gameplay. Garbage Pail Kids is up next, and this is a licensed NES game developed by Topps and published by I Am 8-Bit. The premise here is simple. You play as Mad Mike, a garbage pail kid who is in search of stale gum. So Mad Mike must travel through time and visit different locations, including the Stone Age, 1985 Tokyo, 3000 BC Egypt, Transylvania, Mars, and even hell. In the game, Mad Mike is joined by three other garbage pail kids, Patty Putty, Leaky Lindsay, and Luke Puke, who also kind of serve as your lives. Each character has their own unique attack, with Patty Putty bouncing around, Leaky Lindsay gets to shoot snot projectiles, and Luke Puke barfs on the enemies. After playing through this a while, you'll find all four characters are useful depending on the current situation. The graphics and sound of this game are appropriately gross and absurd, with colorful and disgusting sprite designs, all while implementing catchy and irreverent music and sound effects. The boss battles in Garbage Pail Kids are definitely a highlight of the game. Each stage ends with a showdown against a giant enemy, based on a character from Garbage Pail Kids cards. This adds to the overall absurdity of the game, and really, the fun factor as well. These boss battles are intense and require strategic use of your character's abilities to defeat them. So that being said, if you're a fan of gross out humor, then Garbage Pail Kids, Mad Mike, and the Quest for Stale Gum is a must play. Honorable mention number one is a game that's sure to get you thinking. Get it together. At its heart, get it together as a puzzle platformer with a unique twist. You take on the role of a scientist who invents an immortality serum, but disaster strikes when a bomb is thrown through the window, spilling the serum all over him and blowing him up. Pieces of his body are spread everywhere, but luckily, he has the ability to put himself back together again. Your job in this game is to manipulate the pieces of your body in order to flip the switch and escape each room. You can put the pieces in any order you'd like, and each piece has a separate means of moving. Your head can roll, your torso can crawl, your legs can jump, and your butt can fart and fly. It's a game that's extremely unique, clever, and fun. The only reason Get It Together gets an honorable mention instead of on the main list is because it's not a full game and is essentially a tech demo. However, I highly recommend playing the demo available because it's a game that's definitely worth checking out. Maybe someday a full game will be made, but until then, Enjoy the fun and challenging gameplay of Get It Together.
Another honorable mention is Guntner. Guntner is a fast-paced shmup set in the mysterious 13th dimension. Players control Rudy, a heavily modified fighter ship equipped with a shield capacitor and a quark cannon. The gameplay in Guntner is fast and frantic. The shield capacitor and quark cannon can be used to fend off threats, but players must be careful not to drain the shield system too much, as this will result in cabin depressurization and death. The game's HUD is located at the bottom of the screen and provides the important information such as the shield capacitor's meter and the player's position in the game world. In other words, when the meter runs out, you die. Guttner was designed to be only 24 kilobytes in size, similar to the black box NES titles. This unique design choice adds to the game's appeal and challenges players to work within the constraints similar to those forced by early game developers. There are also several power-ups players can collect to boost their abilities and increase their chances of survival. These include batteries, bombs, mushrooms, and extra lives. Overall, Guntner is a challenging and thrilling shmup that's perfect for fans of fast-paced action games. Its unique setting in the 13th dimension, with many, many different types of enemies, adds an extra layer of excitement, and the variety of power-ups and enemies keep the gameplay fresh and engaging. If you're a fan of shmups on the NES, Guntner is definitely worth checking out. Another runner-up is Astro Ninja Man DX. I recently tried this game and had a blast with it. I have to say, I'm not usually a fan of bullet hell games, but this one is pretty badass. One thing that's really neat about the game is that you can pick up extra men and get up to five all the way across the board at the bottom. I know I can appreciate a good extra man every now and then. Also, it doesn't matter if a bullet hits one of your pink men, because as long as it doesn't hit the white guy in the middle, you can continue. Sorry pink dudes, you guys are cannon fodder. The graphics in this game are pretty sweet. The enemies and background elements are cool. I enjoy the animation, as well as these 3D looking cubes. The music is also pretty rocking. In fact, this might be my favorite NES homebrew soundtrack of all time. I mean, who wouldn't want to rock out to some 8-bit tunes while fighting moon ninjas and trying to prevent an apocalypse on Earth? Overall, I really enjoyed Astro Ninja Man DX and would definitely recommend giving it a try. The gameplay is fun, the graphics and music are solid, and the concept is unique. Be prepared to face some weird enemies like Skeletor's giant head, but hey, at least the rock and roll soundtrack will keep you pumped up. And remember, when the moon is destroyed, the Earth will experience a true apocalypse. So you better go out there and save the world one bullet at a time. Number one on our top 10 list of homebrew NES games is Alwa's Awakening. This game is like a blast from the past, with its gorgeous graphic design and solid 8-bit soundtrack. When you first start playing, you're greeted with a brief overview of the game's stories and controls. With only four buttons to use, this game is super easy to pick up and play. The gameplay here is top-notch, with smooth controls and challenging level designs. You play as a hero named Zo, on a mission to save the land of Alwa. You'll jump and fight your way through over 400 unique rooms in this Metroidvania-style game. So you'll be traveling back and forth, trying to solve puzzles and unlock doors to progress. The graphics here are awesome, the bright and colorful 8-bit artwork is a treat for the eyes, and the character and enemy designs are right up there with some of the best NES games. The music here is catchy and fitting for the game, and the sound effects are spot on. Now I bet I know what Frank would say. But this game's been out for five years on multiple consoles, it's not new. And Frank would be right, it's not new. But this was remade from the ground up to be played on a real NES this past year. And having only played this version, it was a complete joy to play. You get unlimited continues and the ability to save your progress throughout the game. Overall, I was really impressed by Alawa's Awakening. It's a great Metroidvania style game with smooth gameplay, beautiful graphics, and a catchy soundtrack. If you're a fan of games like this or just love the nostalgia of playing an NES game, I highly recommend giving Alawa's Awakening a try. If I had to put a number on it, I'd give it a solid 9 out of 10. As we wrap up our top 10 list of NES homebrew games, I want to emphasize that this list is more about raising awareness of the talented developers in this community than it is about ranking the games. While I've tried my best to showcase some of the best and most unique titles, I'm sure I missed a few gems. So please leave your recommendations in the comments for a possible follow-up video. Together, we can continue to celebrate and support the creativity and hard work of the NES homebrew scene. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the world of NES homebrew. And we'll see you soon.